I understand Omicron has a sibling. And I'm sure for a lot of people listening and watching right now, they don't want to hear about this, Andy, but we've got to talk about it. What's it about? Well, just to be clear, I usually don't like to be the messenger telling people that there are new variants either, but the virus is sort of doing its own thing out there and evolving as we expected. So uh, Omicron has a, I've heard it called a sister virus. Uh, it's called technically BA2, whereas Omicron that we've been struggling with is called BA1. It's different enough from, from, from the original Omicron so that we are a little bit worried about how well immunity cross reacts to, to that virus. And it's certainly starting to spread now in the wake of that first Omicron going through the population. So um, all signs point that vaccines should work just as well against it. But again, it, it is increasing in numbers. So we're trying to monitor what disease severity will be and all those other factors to really get a sense of how much of an impact it might have. Andy, where are the variants coming from? And I ask this, meaning, uh, you know, what areas have the level of uh, lack of immunity and also the level of transmission that would probably possibly lead to some of these variants? Well, there are three variants that we call Omicron right now, all of which seem to have evolved around the same time in some part of Southern Africa and all emerged around the same time. We're only seeing, we saw one sweep through the world. We're seeing a second one coming through right now. So these Omicron variants all came up at the same time. What we're seeing though is, as expected, as this virus moves through the population, if it picks up a mutation that makes it a little bit better to infect or makes it a little bit more easier to infect vaccinated people, that virus will become the dominant virus eventually. And so we're seeing some of that right now. Um, we have to remember there have been an amazingly large number of cases and, and, and more cases equals more mutations equals more variants. So we're seeing some of the fallout from those huge numbers of cases in terms of new variants emerging and starting to spread. Meanwhile, we have controversy in the corporate uh, C-suites as people try to figure out when they can possibly start eating easing back on the mask requirements. Southwest CEO shifted his stance and came out saying it actually still is appropriate to be wearing masks on planes. Is there going to be a time, given the fact that there are all these mutations, where we don't have to wear masks? Absolutely. And I think, the, you know, the, the silver lining here is that vaccination boosting is protecting against severe disease. So that's a really good thing. So even though Omicron is a very different type of variant from the vaccine, the vaccines are working against that severe disease. And combine vaccination with the large number of infections that we've had, the immunity in the population is going to be quite extensive. Um, and that should really make a big impact in terms of severe disease. And once we know severe disease is under control, that's when we can start thinking about releasing some of these uh, public health interventions and moving back to some level of normalcy. Well, when we talk about new variants emerging, what is the difference in, in protection for someone who was vaccinated but also had a breakthrough infection versus someone who just had an infection but isn't vaccinated? When we look toward the variants of the future, if we still have a significant unvaccinated population, does that mean that you could still see surges of similar size? Yeah, when it, when it comes to Omicron, it's pretty clear. Vaccination alone or infection alone doesn't protect you as well as vaccination plus boosting or infection plus vaccination. So that really, that combination of boosting or infection and vaccination is really the best immunity. And there's new data coming out saying that if you've been boosted and infected, you may have an even not only stronger immune response, but broader, meaning that it recognizes lots of other variants. So we're moving to a stage where vaccination has set the stage. It's protecting populations. And now even if you get infection, you're protected from disease and you're getting a bit of a benefit in terms of broader and stronger immune responses. So this is the way we want to deal with pandemics. Use vaccination to get everybody protected from severe disease. And then if the virus continues to circulate, the infection is just going to boost responses and make us even more protected from future variants.